welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, another episode of, um, of, sorry, I was just looking, I just created this grid in our software, and in the version I was looking at, this circle was over the top of the grid, now it's sort of behind the lines, which doesn't matter at all, as far as I understand the rules. Anyway, not to worry. Um, <laughs> Sorry, this is a puzzle sent in by, well, I would have said or if this was an English word. I would have said or if I thought it was the Scandinavian currency with a missing diacritic. As the author is, I think, from the Czech Republic, I'm going to say or a, but I don't really know. Um, so apologies if that's a mispronunciation of your pseudonym. Um, so... One thing I didn't mention yesterday, by the way, in the stuff that's been going on on the channel, we have now got updates to both the Thermo and the Killer apps. We know they have been a bit late, but if you've got the Thermo and the Killer apps and you haven't um, gone in and updated them, they are, I think, fully updated to the 100 puzzles now. They are complete. Um, we are still working on the Miracle app where we have the puzzles. Um, I just need to get through hinting some of them, I think. Um, so anyway, those are complete along with, I mean, we've got these hunts on Patreon, still loads of correct entries coming in every day. Well done if you've done that lately. Uh, three times a Sudoku. It's effectively the same grid used three times with different rule sets. Quite entertaining, I think. Um, and what else have we got going on? Well, Simon's been doing solves of Fistamafel on Patreon. Um, there's his crossword solve on the channel and... Loads going on everywhere. Do just check out all the links under the video to see if you're if you're interested in our solving in general and Sudoku. This is where to be definitely. If you're interested in Wordle, this is the right channel to be on as well. Anyway, that is all going on. But this first link under the video is to this puzzle, which is called Reflection and Rotation, which will please the mathematicians who always like their transformations. Um, normal Sudoku rules apply. One row or one column is occupied by an invisible nine cell long thermometer along which digits increase. So we can't see that, but it's there somewhere and it's straight if it's one row or one column. Box two and box six have mirror symmetry around the yellow axis. Ah, so this axis here is providing a mirror. So that cell will be the same as that cell through the mirror. Um, obviously, we don't have to rotate the numbers, unless it's eight. That always likes being rotated. Um, box four and box eight have rotational symmetry around the blue dot. So, again, well, this digit now won't appear there. That would be reflectional symmetry. It will appear there, because this whole box is being rotated round. So that's really interesting. Two different uh, transformational um Transformations, two different changes there. Um, a clue outside the grid, and we only have four of these, indicates the sum of the diagonal, which may include repeat digits. So those four digits will add up to 32. I think they must include repeat digits. Now, there's not many clues here. So obviously the reflection and rotation are going to do a fair amount of work. Or maybe the invisible thermo is. I don't know. So anyway... Do have a go at the puzzle on the link under the video. You'll be able to tell from, from the uh, time of the video how difficult I found it, perhaps. But I don't know that at the moment. I am looking forward to getting started on this. So, let's get cracking. Um, I mean, these are, these are quite big thermos for three of them. Even that's an average of eight. That's, that is big, actually. It's an average of nearly eight. This one, not so much. Um, I'm going to look for the invisible thermo. That's where I'm going to start my hunt. Now, yes, OK. Right. It, if it's a row, yes, OK. If it's a row, this two is really important. If it's a row, it can't be going forwards because it would have a two in this column. So if it, if you tried to put in a row there of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it couldn't go one, two, because that would clash with the two. So if it's a row, it goes backwards. 
And look, because of where that two is, if it's a column, ah, let's not forget the case that if it's a row, it could go forwards if it's in row eight. Okay, hang on. Right, let's, let's put in all the row. Oh, and the six is in column six. Right, the rows is the best place to start. Okay, what I'm going to do will look mad. I'm going to hide. No, I know. I'm going to highlight the whole grid. And then I'm going to remove rows that cannot be this row. Oh, now I was, because it depends whether it's forwards or backwards, doesn't it? Okay, let's not do that. Um, okay, well, how am I going to work this out? How am I going to depict what I'm working out? That's the more important thing. Right, it, it can only be a forward row. Let's make that green there. And it can't be because that would need a six here. Right, there's no forward row possibility. Good. So if it's a row, it's backwards. It can't be there because one's in the wrong place. It can't be here or here because they'd need to start with a one. Ah, it can't be in rows four, five, or six because they'd need a six in one of these positions. So if it's a row, right, if it's a row, it's in one of these two positions and it goes backwards with the one here, the two here, the three here, and so on. Now, it could be a column. But if it's a column, the only way it can run upwards is there, which it could do. The only way it could run downwards is from the column with the one in it, I think. Right, so there are four possibilities for this thermo. It either runs that way or down here or up here. So let's have a look at these and see if we can eliminate any of them. Now, one of them will be correct, so it will be very hard to eliminate. Um, I don't know which one to do first. Ah, yes, I do. Look at this 32 diagonal, and let's compare that with these, which would have to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, if you were to put a 2 on this diagonal, the other three digits, yeah, they could all be nines, but you'd still only get up to 29, nowhere near 32. So that is not right. I think it's got to be the same here. One, two, three, four. Even if they were all nines, which they couldn't be, you'd only get up to 31. So no, these orange, it's not a row, it's a column. So let's get rid of those as highlighting. We've either got a column going up or a row going down for the thermometer. Now, I think this 32 is a very constrained number. Let's have a look at this going down. This would end in, well, it would end in, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, it would end in 7, 8, 9. Now, the biggest digit you could have here is a 6, and this isn't going to work because the biggest digit is a 6 because you've used those in the box. Now, that means you've got 13 on the diagonal. Those two would have to add up to 19, and one of them would have to be double digits. So nonsense, it's not there. We have found the thermo. The thermo is here, and let's fill it in and then remove the coloring. Look at that, and we suddenly get eight digits in the grid just by doing that work. That, that's very clever, actually. Okay, so we've got our thermo, and that rule, at least we can forget the invisible thermometer rule. Now, what do we do next? Well, let's have a look at this 29 diagonal R, which has got a seven on it. And remember, this can't be more than six now. And this can't be a nine. So the maximums are eight, six, and nine, which would add up to 30, which is only one over. So there's one degree of freedom. So these could all be one number lower. And those cells are definite. Oh, of course, I'd forgotten the symmetry. Now, the blue is rotational symmetry, so we can fill in four, five, and six. Now I can put in eight or nine there. That's where that cell rotates round to. This seven or eight reflects to the same place. And now this pair on the 32 diagonal is going to add up to whatever this pair does on the 29. So, so what? So the minimum they can be, it's not actually 15, because if they were 15, that would have to add up to 14. So the minimum is 16. 
think that's right. 13 is the maximum, yes. 16 is the minimum here. So the maximum... Do I mean that? For these two cells is 16? No, I must mean the minimum. Hang on, I'm getting, I'm totally confusing myself. These two, that's either 12 or 13. So these two either add up to 17 or 16. These are 12 or 13. Oh, these are either 16 or 17. Yeah, that's right. So these are 16 or 17, and these add up to 15 or 16. Okay, that's not quite as helpful as I thought, but it means that we're using the digits 6, 7, 8, or 9 if those two add up to 15 or 16. Um, ah, oh, 6, 6, just a bit of Sudoku puts 6 in one of those two cells. Oh, which amusingly, by reflection through this axis, puts it in one of these two. And we could have worked that out from 6 and 6 there. Um, do I need to use one of these other diagonals? Because there's not much else to go on here. So few given digits. Unless I'm missing something about reflection and rotation, which I might be. Okay, let's have a look at this, because this was averaging 8, which is big. So, what are the maximum digits along here? 9 and 6 is 15, and 9 is 24, 9, 33, and 6 is 39, and 9 is 48. Ooh, and that makes the minimum for these two 15 as well. So that's from 67892. Right, and if the minimum is 15 and the maximum is 17, there are two degrees of freedom. So I should have just kept going with the maximum. 969969 9, 9 is 48, plus a 98 pair, which is the maximum for those two cells on their own, is 65. That is only two degrees of freedom. So from the maximum, these can only reduce by 2. Now I didn't put 7 in there because it's looking at that. This can be... Oh, well, this is a reflection of that cell, so that can only be 9 or 8. <clears throat> now, can these actually be 8s? Because that would take away both degrees of freedom. Then this would have to be a 6. No, that's absolutely important. In fact, now this is 8 or 9. Sorry, I've just seen. We get a 6. We, we just pencil marked six into those cells, and this can't be a six, so we get sixes in those cells. And now this is a five. That has taken away one degree of freedom on this diagonal already. And now these can't both be eights, because that would take away two more degrees of freedom. We've only got one degree of freedom left since that stopped being its maximum six. So this is nine or eight. These add up to either 17 or 16. So they don't have a six in. Um, and they do have a 9 in. 17 or 16 must have a 9 in, so this isn't a 9, obviously. Now what's happened to this diagonal? Not much, because this could still be a 9-8 pair. We've got an 8-9 pair there as well, very unexpectedly. Ah, oh, now these add up to 12. Yes, of course, that's maximised this one. That's an 8 and this is a 9 on the 29 diagonal. And we've finished the 29 diagonal. We use rotation, we use reflection. Now, this can't be an 8 anymore. Um, this hasn't changed its nature. Right, what next? So 9, 5, 9, 6, 9 is 38. These others add up to 25, which is either 9 and 16 or 8 and 17. Ah, oh, but these now add up to 17. So these two add up to 15, which is still possible. And these add up to 16 or 17 and include a 9.
Okay, let's just try and do a bit more Sudoku, maybe? I don't really know. Oh look, I can place a 5 in the central box. 5 in this box has to be in one of those two cells. Uh, that means 5 in this box is theoretically in one of those two, but this 5 says there's a 5 up here, so that's not a 5, and that's the 5 I can place in the central box. So maybe there's more Sudoku to... Oh look, I've got that 9, so that's become an 8, and that takes the last degree of freedom. This now has to be a 9-8 pair, I know the order. These two have to add up to 17. Suddenly I have done three of the four diagonals completely. Now there's a four in one of those two cells. Didn't That didn't increase. Oh, hang on, this is a reflection, of course, so that can't be the five, because the five's in one of those two. Um, we need an 8 in box 3. It's got to be there. Uh, can I finish 8s? Eight? 8s in one of those two cells. Yes, hang on. 8 I can put in this box. That rotates around to this cell. And the last 8 in the grid goes in down there. So next... Five, 9... Nine in the central box, that's just done. Probably all nines are done. That one is a nine, and one up here. Yeah, all nines are done. Look, there's a five seven pair looking at those two cells. So that forces a five seven pair into column one there. We get a four six. These are one and three. Now that is reflected to there, which is one or three. Oh, let's have a look at this 33 diagonal. Oh, I've got loads of it. 8, 12, 17, 23. So these other three cells add up to 10. Well, nothing for it but to pencil mark them. That is my name. Um, 10. The maximum they can be is 14 with a 6, 3, 5. So there's four degrees of freedom, so this can't be a one. That's not that helpful. It's got to be a seven in one of these two cells, and by rotation into one of those two. Um, that means there's going to be a seven in one of these cells, because... The 7 in those rules out 7 from these two. It means there is a 7 in one of those and a 7 in one of those, so the 7 in row 5 is going to have to be in one of these two, which reflects up into those two cells. And that means there is a 7 in one of these two. It's a little X-wing on 7s. I suspect I'm really not quite getting a handle on how reflection and rotation work properly here. But never mind. Uh, three can't be in those cells. So three is in one of these two. Now by rotation, that puts it in one of those two. That doesn't quite resolve anything. Um, six, nine, seven, five. Ah! One can't be in those or those. Now, how do the reflections work? That means it can't be there or there either. No, it might mean more than that. What am I... It couldn't be in... No, I have... Ugh. Let's start that again. One can't be there or there. The reflection of these two is... Why am I so much worse at reflection than rotation? Probably because of doing crosswords. So actually one can't be in any of those cells. So one is restricted to these, and therefore this becomes a one. That's rather weird. And, and the, oh, here's, here's what I'm bad at. It's Sudoku and looking at the one up there, looking at that cell. Right, three there, one there, one there. Now, let's do this again. I, I think that's going, well, eight. 10, 15, 16, 24. These two add up to 9. So we can wipe out the 2s, because 7 is not an option. 
three six is possible or four five. So this can't be three. This can't be four. Oh, it can't be three either. Right, it's done. All the diagonals are done. There we go. Okay, so now maybe we are getting through this. Um, don't want to speak too soon. <laughs> and I don't know what to do next. Let's look at column one. Two and three still to go in. Now that rotates into here. That's a two or a three. Uh, which I could have worked out in a different way. Um, so I've used I've used the thermometer. I've used all the little killers. They're they're all finished. I am just now. Oh, and I've still got some reflection rotation to use, haven't I? Ah, oh, whatever's here out of two, three, or seven is going to have to be here in the middle box. That's interesting. Um, hmm, okay, I don't know what to do with that information. What's this cell? It can't be one, eight, five, six, or nine. It's reflected, so it also can't be four or three. So that is two or seven. This one is this one, one, nine, six, eight, three, five. No, I don't think that's the way to solve this puzzle. Oh, look, I've got a five looking at that cell. And its reflection means that we get fives here. That becomes a five. Fives are probably finished. Yes, it looks like it. If I do the one in box seven. Right, seven, seven, that can't be seven, so this is seven, and that's my colored cell, so they're all sevens. Let's remove those pencil marks, sevens, and the colors, we don't need them anymore. Um, one has to be in one of those two, and it's fixed here, that becomes a one, that reflects up to there. That is two or three, not a one, so we get a one there. And we get a four here to complete the column, and that's reflected here. So this is a two, three pair. This is a four. This is also two or three. Um, and this is a two, three, seven triple. This one can't be a seven, so it's two or three. This one don't know. This is a two or a seven. No, it's not a seven. It's a two. So we get seven in the middle. Then we've got two three pairs still to resolve in the transformations. And we can put a four here. Ah, look, that two has done it. So three there. Two, three, two, three, two. And the rotation works. Oh, it didn't fix these ones. Yes, it did, because we go up there for a three, two, three, and the reflection works as well. And six and one go in there. And that's a very nice puzzle. I mean, that's a really interesting rule set deployed there. Two, four, and just two digits to do six. And I think we finish off with a two. There we go. So thank you to Ore Atha. Uh, reflection and rotation, entertaining, mathematical, and uh, quite a few interesting Sudoku variants, including the old hidden thermometer there. Um, excellent fun. Thank you for watching, as always, and uh, hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.